What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2022 Hyundai Elantra N. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Elantra N because I've never driven a proper N before. This is the performance edition of the Elantra and I've driven plenty of Elantras here on the channel. You've seen that. I had one as a press vehicle and I liked it, but this is something special. This is something very different than its economy car brethren and I'm excited to share that with with you today. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 2.0 liter turbo under the hood. Well, from the factory, they make 276 horsepower, which is a very good number. However, this vehicle is a full bolt-on vehicle. So it has a different air intake, intercooler, turbo inlet, downpipe, engine and transmission mounts, and it is on a stage two tune. The owner believes it should be making around 350-ish horsepower on this setup, but it has yet to be on a dyno. I know, and the tune is getting changed somewhat soon. But the two liter turbo is part of the reason why the Elantra N was so exciting compared to the other Elantras. 276 horsepower out of a vehicle like this is magnificent. And you might thumb your nose at the Hyundai brand, but this car will change your mind, I promise you. Like I said, paired to it is a dual clutch automatic transmission. It's a wet style clutch, and you could find these in manual. So you can find a manual Elantra N if you want, but I think the automatic has some benefits. It is a wet dual clutch, which is amazing, but also we get the NGS button that is not available on manual cars, which we'll talk about later on. Last but not least, this is front wheel drive. However, it does have a torque vectoring limited slip differential up at the front, which is fantastic. Another interesting thing about the rear suspension actually is that the base models get torsion beam rear suspension, but this actually has multi-link. How does it feel to drive the Elantra N? Well, it walks the line very, very well. In eco mode, you still get the noise from that 2.0 turbo, but it is very civil. The transmission shifts kind of when it wants to, and there's nothing new about it. But then when you put it into the sport modes or N custom modes, it really, really wakes up and it wants to tear your throat out. Woo! <laughs> it's quick. But more than that, there's just so much going on. It's it's very visceral. Cause you hear the turbo start spooling up and sucking in and you hear the exhaust and you get to play with the paddles and it's just a very full experience. It's not just quick in a straight line. For the heck of it, it is a 4D experience. And that to me makes a car amazing. It doesn't have to break world records, but it has to give me an experience that most other cars don't and that's what the Elantra N does. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a completely digital gauge cluster. I really, really like this because it is customizable throughout the drive modes. And when you put it into the end mode, there's this explosion that is so cool, so unique. And I love it when vehicles do this. I also think it's easy to read. I don't think that it's too convoluted, too clustered to figure out what's what. And I like that a lot. On the steering wheel, on the left, we have our voice commands, volume, skip track, phone options, and one of our end buttons. And on the right, we have our cruise control options, okay and selector, and our other N button. So these two blue N buttons are two custom drive modes. The left one is custom mode one, the right one is custom mode two, and of course, as the name suggests, you can customize these to fit what you want, which is very, very cool. And here is all the customization that you can do with these buttons, which is fantastic. I love these N pages, really, really cool, and I love that they give the this ability. Then we have the NGS button. So this is basically a push to pass button. 
And what this does from the factory is it will actually overboost the engine for 20 seconds to give you extra power for passing or if you just want it momentarily. Now, this car is tuned, and so this is actually turned off because it's already making more power. But very, very cool to see that from the factory here in the Elantra N. And this wheel is Alcantara, which it didn't come this way from the factory, but these are genuine Hyundai parts from Korea. Very, very cool. Around the back of the steering wheel, we also do have paddle shifters, which are nice and solid, and I like them a lot. Off to the left, we have our little circle of hope, I'll call it. All the Elantras of this era have this. It doesn't do anything. It's just there for, I guess, symmetry. And down below, we have our gauge dimmer switch, lane keep assist, and traction control off. Moving out of the door, we get more Alcantara with a little speaker, power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, we do have our infotainment system. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, they are wired for 2022. There wasn't any wireless available yet. And like I mentioned, you get all of these really, really awesome end pages that you can use. Love, love, love to see that. And here's the backup camera in case you're curious about the Hyundai Elantra. And down below, we have two climate control vents and the hazard switch and the buttons for the radio, media, map, navigation, things like that really really love to see those features stick here and then we have our climate controls dual zone climate heated seats auto climate fairly basic for a modern car but still nice to see and moving down below we do have 12 volt outlet and two usbs one for charging and one for the infotainment moving around the shifter the shifter does also have alcantara on it as well that's another korean hyundai part but off to the left we have our drive mode select so the normal drive modes are eco normal and sport and then of course you have the end modes that will let you push the envelope even further and we have our parking camera button so when you are stopped or moving slowly you can engage the camera system just to keep an eye on things the shifter is nice it's functional works well and i don't have any complaints but moving down the center console we do have cup holders so we'll do a big freaking bottle test and ladies and gentlemen this is why we do the big freaking bottle test in every single car the normal elantra passes the big friggin' bottle test but the elantra n does not they change the cup holders between the trim levels my assumption is to include this handbrake and so the elantra n fails where the sel actually passes very very interesting to see <laughs> Then we do get a center console, of course, finished in that Alcantara as well, parts from Korea. And then we'll talk about the seats. The seats are decently aggressive buckets. Now, I'm a big guy, and I actually do fit in them okay. They're a little too slim for me, but most bucket seats are, so I can't really knock the Elantra N for that. But one really, really cool feature that it has is this little N logo actually lights up at night. Did they have to do this in a track car? No. Does it make me feel cool and special and put a dumb grin on my face every time I get into the car? Yes, it does. And sometimes that's just as important as on-track performance. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2022 Hyundai Elantra. And, and a couple of things to note. First of all, I don't think I have less space back here than a normal Elantra. However, the way these seats are designed with the buckets, they're definitely more daunting to look at, which doesn't matter, obviously, but just something to note. I do have some Alcantara inserts back here as well. I don't seem to get a center console. And I have nothing down below. No vents, no chargers, no nothing. But very, very interesting to see. However, let's hop into the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space. There's a little hidden gem in there. And then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the Elantra N. Hold it here on the key fob and it does pop the trunk up. And once we are back here, here's what it was hiding. There is a chassis brace in the trunk. Now this is specific to the Elantra N, no other Elantra's got it. And it does stiffen up the chassis to help with cornering and whatnot and keeping the chassis nice, rigid, and predictable. However, this does pose a little bit of an issue because if you wanna put the rear seats down and slide stuff through, well, you have a giant gate uh, or wall or, well, a brace. Uh, kind of obstructing that. So some people do remove this if they do plan on daily driving and you have like, you know, long items you need to put in the car because I'll show you here and then we can come in here and pull these down. 
And as you can see, <laughs> it uh, it's a little bit of an issue if you need to fit something big through here. So very cool that they did that. I love that Hyundai actually included that, but it could be some dailyable issues with that. Not the end of the world, just something to note. Other than that, pretty basic standard trunk. Here it is in the Elantra N. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And first of all, it looks fantastic. I love the wheels. I think it looks aggressive and I think it looks different enough from the normal Elantra to where you could see it in traffic and go, hey, that's an Elantra N, that's cool. But the real star of the show is this color. I love this light blue. I think it's so captivating. It's so pretty. And there just isn't really a blue on sale from other makers that matches this. And so that's always a good point I like to see is a unique color, something where I could see maybe just a rear fender, maybe a hood and say, oh, I know exactly what car that is based off the color. That's a good spot to be in. And that's the spot I'm in with the Elantra N. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving Finally, a Hyundai Elantra N. Well, I had high expectations and high hopes going into this video. I knew that these cars were cool and on paper, they seem really cool. The whole N division was the brainchild of an employee who used to work at the BMW M cars. And I love the M cars so much. I love the color. I love the way that these cars look. But that was my knowledge. That's all I knew about these cars before driving one. And now, having spent some good seat time behind the wheel, I can confirm those suspicions. This car is wonderful. It's delightful. And it's a really, really good middle ground of performance and daily ability. Yes, this car will snarl at you and want to bite your head off, but you don't have to keep it in a cage. You can take it to the store and drive it around and enjoy it as a Hyundai product. There's a lot of cars out there that are very good on track, but if you try to take them to Jewel Osco, you might as well take a jackhammer to the back or a sewing needle to the ears. It's not the case with this car. It does everything incredibly well. And I understand people's hesitation when wanting to like this car. Here's a 2009 Hyundai Elantra that I reviewed. It looks like the day old bread Jimmy John's gives out for free. This is the glow up of the decade, if not the century. This shouldn't have really even been named the Elantra. It's almost doing this car a disservice to call it an Elantra. This is something different. And what it ends up being is wonderful. More people should buy these cars. Do I like it better than a Civic Si? Yeah, I do. I actually do. Modern for modern part, yeah, I like this better than a Civic Si. A Type R would be stiff competition, but I'm not going to decide that today. I need some time to marinate on that. But I know one thing for absolute certain, this car is great. And if there isn't one in your driveway, I would work on trying to figure out how to change that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Andreas for letting me take out his Elantra and I was so excited to do this video. Andreas is absolutely wonderful to work with. We had a really nice long conversation this morning. He showed me a couple other vehicles. Maybe you'll see him on the channel one day, maybe not, who knows. But he's absolutely great. This car is fantastic and I appreciate him very, very much for letting me take it out today. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.